9.9. You radio dial. 73 degrees. 702. Here's an oldie but goldie. We're going to do this so Donnie can go out to the car and get in a more comfortable position. So I'll have to.
Put this on so he can hear you. He's going to lead us in a song tonight. We'll forego the song. Miss Larry wants to lead us in the song. I might want to lead us in our cappella. <laughs> he said, move along. Okay. Well, we don't have our. Missy will. Missy? Yeah. Because we don't want to argue with That's right. Between both of you, we might be a good thing. Okay. We'll think about that. Maybe we might end with it. What do you think? Well, good evening. Good to see you here tonight. And uh, uh, it's uh, maybe Richard in just a just a minute or two. You can go out and make sure everything's working so Donna can hear. And uh, definitely want to make sure that he can hear. So uh, got some out in the parking lot. So we'll wear this thing so they can hear. Welcome to those on Facebook. Glad you're with us. I'm glad that you're here tonight. So, uh, hopefully we're going to be able to have a little fun, a little bit of fun with Abel, and look a little bit more into that. So we're going to begin tonight with our prayer concerns, and obviously the, one of the first things that comes to my mind is uh, uh, Brother Matt and, and his sister, and of course Karen, all the kids, the whole family. The loss of his mother. I, I read where uh, the graveside service is going to be Sunday at 2 at the Stansbury uh, Cemetery with uh, Brother Jonathan Stansbury doing it. And of course, if you remember, what, two years ago, Jonathan did our revival? He'd kill me every time. All you folks out there, even me, older than him, he'd say, Listen, youngins, y'all remember that? <laughs> It just, I'd get a tickle out of that every time he'd say it. But, uh, good, good man. I like Jonathan. But, uh, so we'll be praying for that. I know it's real hard on Matt's dad and Matt and sister. And just praying for that whole family, lifting them up. We've still got some other bereaved families that are still struggling. Uh, noticed that today. Was, uh, I believe it was today or yesterday, but pretty sure today was Eric Gilley's anniversary, 30th anniversary, and uh, his post was, we had no idea what was facing us. And well, I, I, they've had a tough road, ain't they? Oh, they have. Mm. So let's continue to remember Reba and all them. Um, I found out, I wasn't, we're good? Okay, good deal. Hello, Donnie. <laughs> um, found out that uh, one of the prayers for Rick and Sheila Davis had mentioned it was a, uh, they had given it to Kathy, and the time I got it, I was a little bit confused, but, uh, but I know they do have one son that's still deployed, and want to keep them in our prayers. Um, also, uh, on that particular day was the anniversary of when Rick, because he's the fire chief of... Uh, I almost said Spruce Pine. Um, oh, it left me. But anyway, he's a fire chief down there around Lake Norman, um, Cheryl's Ford. And it was the anniversary of they lost a diver. I don't know if you've seen that on news or not, but uh, they lost a diver uh, searching and rescuing for someone that was lost. So that was a tough day for them. Um, so, uh, let's remember Geraldine Reed. She's going to be having surgery June uh, the 15th or the 14th. We've got to find out uh, for sure. We heard the 14th, but that's on a Monday, but we think it's Tuesday, so we'll find out for sure. But she'll be having some things done on her back. We need to pray for her. Uh, of course, Dexter had prayed for his... Uh, sister's grandson Avery, continue to remember him. Uh, continue to remember Miss Tootsie. Miss Tootsie fell not for last, and so she's fine, uh, just a little bruised up. So, 
Who else? And to remember Donnie. Donnie, yes. Donnie would definitely continue to pray for you. Didn't find out anything from the MRI, so now it'll still be two weeks yeah. before he's appointed at the plant, uh, pain clinic. So let's keep remembering Donnie. I wish I had a church full of Donnies. Yes. <laughs> sure. And Donnies. Prayer request. Praise report. They're here. Yep, they're here. Good day. Anybody want to share something the Lord's done for them? Well, that, that reminds me for us to continue to, especially this week, uh, praying for the county commissioners. It's budget time. And uh, so uh, I know uh, numerous of them are, are Christians. And so all the department heads have been stressed, including the sheriff. And, um, but uh, let's continue to pray for them. missed. All right, anything else? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, Jim, I'll, I'll ask you if you will to lead us in this prayer. way tonight as he studies the word and gives us the word that we understand and we can't understand it Lord. We just ask it in your precious name. Amen. All right. If you want to take your Bibles, we'll begin in Hebrews 11. And uh, it's week by week, but we're certainly going to try to come back on Wednesday night and deal with some of the stuff that we dealt with on Sunday morning. Hopefully add to it and get some thoughts and comments and input from you guys. I'm not going to promise that we're going to do that every Wednesday, but I would like to do that. I, I do think it's fun uh, to do that because it gives you a couple days to think about uh, what the sermon was about and everything. And so, uh, so Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, and of course we'll, we will revert back uh, to those there in Genesis as well, where the actual story's at. But uh, let's begin in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Again, we'll read, the Bible says, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, uh, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, uh, God testifying of his gifts, and through it being dead, still speaks. 
So I was thinking, Tisha and I was talking a little bit, going down the road one day, and uh, so I was thinking a little bit more about Sunday's lesson, and I was thinking about Cain's sacrifice. We talked a lot about Abel, but I was thinking about Cain's sacrifice, um, and in the difference where God accepted Abel's and did not accept Cain's. And I thought, well, maybe Cain's sacrifice was not his best fruit that was rotten, or, you know, who knows. But the Bible doesn't tell us that. And you would think that if Cain was bringing a sacrifice to the Lord, that he would bring some good stuff. I'm glad, I'm glad tonight that when Linda fixes her beans, that she brings her good beans. And she's had lots of practice. Well, those are by far the best beans I've ever had in my life. And when other people bring things, when Donna brings a flaw and and I'll forget things, but I know each and every one of you can bring something that's very, very special. You don't, I mean, you know, you don't uh, just throw something in the pot and just bring it to church. You want to bring something. You're not necessarily making a sacrifice to God, but you're serving God, you know, by, by serving his people. So I begin to think about that, and while the Bible does not say, we begin to think about it may have been that the vegetables that Cain brought was fine. The problem was here. Did anybody else think about that? Several people have. Because I was thinking, you know, it kind of comparing, well, Abel brought his firstling, brought his, brought his best. And the Bible says the fat thereof, and in the original language, that literally means the best. Now, I, I don't really like fat. You'd think I love fat as much as I have of it on my body, but as far as when I'm eating my steak, if a little slips in, you know, I'm too lazy to try to cut it all off. But you know, I'm not just going to slice off a piece of fat and start. But in the original language, it's talking about the best. This was the best stuff. And so um, it's, you know, it just carries with it the idea of the very best. So in this thought, perhaps, again, it was not the sacrifice that God rejected at all, but the heart that brought the sacrifice. So let's put it into a New Testament term and something we may very well deal with. And that is, uh, the Bible tells us that if we come and we come before the Lord, we bow before the Lord and we are, you know, going to make sacrifice, we're going to worship. And the Bible tells us that if we have all with our brother, if we've got a situation going on with our brother or sister, what are we supposed to do? Fix it. Fix it. The Bible says just leave it laying there and go and fix it and then come back. So that's kind of an idea for that. So it's a very valid point, whereas Cain's heart wasn't right. Now we know Cain's heart wasn't right. We have other evidence in the Bible that Cain's heart wasn't right, right? Don't we? What did Cain do? <coughs> He killed his brother. That's a pretty bad place for your heart to be if you're willing to go kill your, your brother. At that time, his only brother, so that he can get that birthright or whatever. I just thought it was another great point to, uh, to an already great point, already great story. Just thought it was a great point. And, and challenging. So challenging for all of us. It helps us to remember diabetic. Uh, it helps us 
look at our heart better. I bet y'all gonna be the first ones there because it's literally right there. <laughs> Need directions? Quick prayer request. I found out at lunchtime today that my cousin's husband passed away. So okay. for the Larry Townsend family. Larry Townsend family, okay. But you remember that. Uh, so how how does that maybe uh, just for a moment? How could that change the story even from Sunday a little bit? And how can that challenge us to look at our hearts? Maybe this is what I thought. It would help us to challenge us in looking at what our goals are. What are what is our intentions? So if we do something and we do really have good intentions in our hearts are full of good intentions and the sacrifice could be horrible but the Lord could still bless that and and we'll get up we'll get over there in just a second again uh, and thinking about the widow's might but yes let's think about that so let's dive into this area a little bit and hopefully we're going to have an opportunity to uh, reflect but let's dive into the area about uh, this idea, I introduced it Sunday, and it's this, that our faith is worship. And we mentioned, and we can all fill in the blank, singing on Sunday, that's been such a big thing. Um, Isaac even mentioned it. If you remember, a few weeks ago, Isaac's like, he's getting a real taste of it. You know, when you want to lead somebody in the songs, and you got those folks out there that, and, uh, you know, I've said plenty of time before, just stand there and say watermelon. It will look like you're singing that song. It works every time. But, uh, no, don't fake it. But, so let's, let's, this idea of worship and how important it is to our lives. And so diving into the idea of our faith is worship. So we talked about that, and that's fine. So the question tonight, uh, and I asked this question Sunday, so I want to talk about this for just a minute, and it's this. How does our worship ascribe our worth of God? So if my idea of God and my uh, what, what I feel God is worth to me is dictated by how I worship and how often I worship. The question, how does our worship ascribe our worth to God? Any answers? Hmm? How does it, how does it, uh, I mean, if it's important for me to worship God, why do I want to worship God? Because I want God to know he's worthy of my worship. My end result is because God wants us to worship him. You know, he tells us that he uh, inhabits the praise of, our, of his people. And so we know that God created us to worship him. He desires, he wants to be worshipped. So is my worship directly related to what I think of God or the worth that I put on God? So... God should be the most important thing in our lives, shouldn't he? God should be first, right? I mean, he, God really should be first. Every body and everything else should be second. I'm not saying it's always like that. We all fall and we, uh, you know, we get interested in something else. But we should really put God first, right? So how does our worship ascribe our worth to God? In other words... Is his view of us the most important? Any answers? He knows that there was slaves to worship as Benjamin. I thought about that, Linda, because when I was a young man, I wanted to be in church. I wanted to be like those cool men. You know, they'd sit down beside their wife and their arms go out on the pew and, 
you know, that's the way they'd sit. And they'd stand up to sing. They were men of all men. And these were the people I looked up to. They wouldn't dare sing a song. So, of course, that's who I was following. So I wasn't going to dare sing a song. Turns out nobody wants me to sing a song, apparently. But that's who I looked up to. Now, what damage was those men doing? Setting bad example for a young man. Even though I had my dad as a model, as a pastor, at that time in my life, I didn't want to be nothing like my daddy. I did not want to be a preacher. I wanted to be a good man. TC said a, th a thousand times she was praying for a good man like a like a deacon or a Sunday school teacher. Never did mention a preacher. But even though I should have my mind on other role models, I looked at them. That I was very what's that word? Uh, yeah, very impressionable. And so all my truck driver, firefighting buddies, that's what they did. So that's what I was going to do. We, we, we never know how we're uh, placing an impression upon somebody else. When I was growing up, there was a certain preacher that would shout. And you could tell it was false. Mm -hmm. Or that's the way I felt. He never shouted until somebody else did. And then when that person did, he would go stand right in front of them and he would shout back. And to me, that made me think it was false. And that's left, left that type of impression on me that, you know, is it real? Uh, sometimes, you know. Well, that was my thought, which is worse. Someone that's just going to stand there and not worship at all, or someone that's going to worship in a fake manner. Now, we've got to be careful not to judge, because there are so many forms of worship. So many forms of worship. I mean, I, I'm i like you. I've seen something like that, and I'm like, hmm. But then again, then the Lord would remind me of the log in my eye as opposed to the speck in his eye. I often wonder about folks that climb the pews. Anybody would like to see an example of what I used to see? <laughs> I've seen preachers just take a lift right here and one foot and one foot and one foot and I'm like... Or, you know, you've seen some things. Um, so yeah, I guess we got to be really careful not to judge somebody. But God does give us a great tool. What is that tool? Discernment. So, good thoughts. I'm trying to get us to think about not only sitting in this room, because I will say this, if this is the only worship you do, sitting on here on Wednesday night or Sunday morning, let me tell you right now, that's not enough. There's no way, as good as God is, there's no way that that's all that worship should be. We know worship is so much more. Look at that in just a minute. I want to move on, though, to um, how trusting God is a form of worship. Trusting God is a form of worship. If I'm worshiping God and I know I can count on Him, I know that I can trust Him, and in my life I make decisions based on my trust in Him, then I am in an act of not only obedience, obedience, but I'm in an act of worship. And so how does trusting God give Him glory? That's the ultimate goal is to give God glory, right? How does trusting God? Now we had several examples. One being Abel that his testimony today is still going forward and he's in the grave. And that brought up a great thought. And I hope that you've thought about this since then. 
that brought, brought up this great thought of people who used to sit in this pew and that pew and that pew, and the Lord has called them home. And so from the grave, their reputation or their uh, testimony is still witnessing to people today. That's exactly what the Bible says about Abel, did it not? And uh, God uh, testifying of his gifts and through it being dead still speaks. Even though Abel was dead, his testimony is still speaking. And that great up, I, I, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you took some extra time to think about that. Now, we would never want to start, well, let's talk about so-and-so. Let's talk about so-and-so. So I thought about that, and I thought, well, you know, somebody's going to say, well, their family member wasn't brought up or something like that. But in reality, that shouldn't matter because the people that's here tonight, that's what we're talking about. Who in your heart, who in your mind is someone that even today from the grave is still making a difference in your life and their testimony. You want to share somebody? Well, I don't know if she's dead uh, because it was when I lived in Ohio when I was a child. But I had a Sunday school teacher. Her name was Pat Adams. And she really put an impression on me. I, I mean, I'll never forget it. Right. J.S. Eller? Yes. Sit in the back and every Sunday we catch we catch our eye. And make you feel sick and sit with him. And we would sit with him during the sermon. Here's what he gave he gave me money and I sent some money he gave me when I was up in Chicago. Oh. Yeah. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, J.S. Eller from Phoenix Baptist and then uh, Miss Jan has a bio. She that person gave her some money and she went and bought that Bible for that. So that's still a testimony today. That's pretty neat. When I first started coming to church here uh, several years ago, it was 1976, I think, there was a lady named Sally Asher that was here. And she would just speak to me and talk to me every Sunday and tell me how glad she was I came and invited me to the Sunday, uh, my memory from her, her romantic blanket, but everybody knows <laughs> that story, uh, but she has so much more, so that's, that's good. Well, I had a wonderful example, and it was my father-in-law, and when Harry and I started dating, he took me down to meet his mother and dad. He never told me his father was deaf. Oh. <laughs> and of course, I didn't know a thing in the world about it. And uh, we hit it off from the very beginning. And I wanted to learn to talk to him. But I had some long hours up in front of the church. <laughs> And that's a great example because to this day, from the grave, because what he gave you, it hadn't been, was it maybe last year, the year before last, that you did the plant sign language for a song that you did? Um, praise God. 
great example. I, I happen to have a young, uh, not young, I was young, uh, I think in the first grade. So my Sunday school teacher was also my teacher at school. And uh, so at school, she'd bend that hand back with that stack of rulers in her hand and she'd wear that hand out. That's one memory of her. But at church, I can remember, and I forget a lot of things, but I can remember the time she would take to teach those little Bible lessons. So I have thought, so I suspect there's a lot of us that remember Sunday school teachers. A friend of Harry will always be part of it. Fine. <laughs> you're the most like a brother not to be a blood brother. Yeah, yeah boy. There, and there's so many of them. Like I say, we're, we're not in danger of leaving nobody out because this is a beautiful thing that somebody that the Lord would bring to our heart uh, tonight. We're just celebrating that. So that's a beautiful thought. Good stories. Thank you for sharing. So it kind of goes along with what we're talking about, our, our reputation, our legacy. And like Abel, our testimony still speaking to the glory of God from the grave. So we have those great examples. Well, the question now is this, can you please God without faith? Remember, we're talking about our faith being a form of worship, and it is. So can we please God without faith? No. You can't have faith without God, I don't think. Well, no. What would you have faith in? <laughs> Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, without faith it is impossible to please God. So anybody guilty of their faith wavering? I'll be the first one. I'll raise my hand high, except for that shoulder pain to get too high there. Of course not. So exhibiting faith in worship means giving God our first, giving God our best. And you know, we talked about a little bit Sunday about time. What do you think about that? What about time? About what? Time. Time. Or as... Uh, one preacher I know says, time. <laughs> I've been thinking about that since. Did you say time or time? T-I-M-E, time. Now, I, I use this as an example. I mean, there's some people that would think going and standing beside a creek or a river and throwing a hook in there would be a waste of time. You'll be here next Wednesday night, Jim. I was waiting for him to look up. <laughs> now that's not a waste of time because next Wednesday at what, 5.30 is when we're going to start? We're going to have big fish fry right here and everybody's invited. We're going to have plenty of food. I'm going to invite some folks here in the neighborhood and and uh, somebody even said, well, if they just want to come and eat fish, they ain't going to stay for church. And as a preacher, I'm sitting over like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If you can get them here and fellowship a little bit, and there's, then there's some people I know we'd like to come just to honor. I hope you can come. Somebody recommended that we invited our dear Methodist brethren. He looks like he put down four or five fish or ten. <laughs> He looks a lot like me. But it's that time of fellowship that we're going to have. That's not a waste of time. I bet you Glenn does some worshiping while you're fishing. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But boy, I tell you what, I can really connect with God when I'm standing or sitting beside the new river. And, and in general, when I'm in creation, looking at God's creation, we were talking today, we went. To, we had to go to Boone, and uh, uh, went the back way to Boone, and, and, and T.C. made a statement, and I've been thinking about that, and it was like, 
I can't even imagine heaven being prettier than this. Look at all these full trees and, and these creeks you go by. It's going to be, but it's hard to imagine being uh, prettier. Pretty top. Pretty top is what I'm talking about because that's how we went. Cut across the boom in the back way. But. No. What road you talking You go out to Beaver Creek and you turn up. You go out by Laurel Knob Circle. I try to avoid the big city. <laughs> Linda. It pains me to think of all them stop signs in town. I try to avoid that. Too much traffic. Kidding. Everybody's got their nice road they like to go on. Okay, where well, we get that point. Uh, I wanted to bring up time again tonight. We're almost done. But I want to bring up time again tonight because I had mentioned that we better make sure that we have time for God, that we have time to serve God, that we have time to worship God, that we have time to know God and, and to serve God. I already mentioned that. Something I hear over and over and over, not only from our young people, but people well on up in their 60s and 70s, and everybody's agreeing with this statement to say that we are too busy. We're just too busy, aren't we? But nobody seems to know what to do about it because we don't know how to jump off the carousel ride. And so we're all dealing with this, regardless of what age we are. So I think something should be important in our life is making sure we have time for God, time for worshiping God, time to get to know God. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. my age, and you think how little we have left. So how much is I got, we went to a Chinese restaurant and I read my fortune cookie and it said, you will soon be reunited with old friends. And I thought, We <laughs> 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 didn't believe that, did you? <laughs> well, <it was> bad. <laughs> old friends on this side or old friends on that side? I didn't say that. <laughs> Let, let, let me let me try to bring us to an end here that because we're talking about time and effort. Remember we talk about effort. Uh, there's so much more that I'd like to go into that, but uh, it takes effort. We have to put forth an effort, don't we? And we have to make a decision. Uh, I mentioned the widow's might real quick. Let me let me share that story with you. It's found in Mark chapter 12, uh, verse 41. The Bible says, and Jesus sent over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were cast in much or, or many were rich that cast in much and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which makes a farthing and he called into his disciples and said unto them tell about a life lesson I mean that's on the spot life lesson and he called his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did uh, cast in of, of their abundance, but she of her want. Big difference. Did cast in all that she had, even all her living. So if we're honest with ourselves, how much do we sacrifice? Do we give and sacrifice out of our abundance? Or do we give and sacrifice out of our own want? I need things, but I'm going to give out. That, that's a great question, and we got to take a long time to go into. But the last thing was, was this. When we exhibit our faith, exhibiting our faith means that we worship giving God our first and giving God our best, not only of our time, of our effort, but as we already talked about tonight, to leave a legacy, a reputation. 
that's going to continue to give glory to God in our lives. And a lot of people these that we mentioned tonight, their testimony, their reputation, their legacy is still giving glory to God. That's something. That's incredible. deal. Let's pray. God, we thank you for tonight. You've been so good to us. And we're mindful and we're thinking tonight of maybe some ways we can change our life. Maybe we can slow down. Maybe we can start spending more time with you. Maybe it's on your heart to, to give us a life lesson like Jesus did the disciples. We're your disciples, and perhaps even now you're giving us a life lesson of how we sacrifice and how we give, but also how we give of our time and our effort so that we give our best energy, we give our best time, we give our best effort to you and not to something else, but we start with you. Help us to do that, Lord, because we can't do it without you. And so we're asking that you help us today. As we leave here tonight, God, we think about all the prayer requests that's been mentioned as we go forth, Lord. Uh, let us be mindful of those. And Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought God we were going to have a song. Oh, no. what you, did you come up with a song? Yeah. Yeah, she is listening to the lesson, and did, did you want okay. to lead us in one? Okay, well, I just wanted to give him the chance. Yeah, well, I appreciate you doing that, so uh, <laughs> we, we won't tonight, I guess. All right, God bless you. Goodbye, folks, and Facebook land.